I had asked for some ideas of input of things that you all would like to hear discussed on this channel. And one of the things that bubbled up to the top very quickly was this idea of how are we faithful during suffering? The first thing that I want to say about that is we understand that pain, that trauma, that suffering is not one size fits all. We as human beings are complicated people and we come with complicated wiring, complicated systems. Trauma can take many, many forms. And, and I don't intend on promoting myself as a trauma expert. There are people who understand that far more deeply than I do, but we know that suffering comes in many forms. We know that suffering from chronic illness, chronic pain can be debilitating. It can be depressing. There could be financial suffering. There could be a loss of a job. There could be loss of income. There can be relational suffering, loss of friendship, uh, death of a loved one. Sometimes our suffering comes through mental trauma, mental abuse. Sometimes it's sexual trauma, sexual abuse. So there's many different types of trauma, but the first thing that we need to understand is that we need to go through these things in community. And sometimes church can be a very unsafe place to share things like that because of how people will react to that, respond to that, and what they will do with your and my information. So we need to seek safe places, and we need to be fostering cultures within our churches that create safe places and spaces for people to share what it is that they're going through. And we also need to make sure that we are truly understanding the complexity of our suffering through a spiritual lens, that it's not just purely physical, and it's not just purely mental, but suffering has a spiritual component to it as well. And, and there can be principalities and powers that, that play into the suffering that we endure. Like Paul says in Ephesians 6, when he's talking about putting on the full armor of God, he says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Suffering has a spiritual component. And, and, I, and I want to be careful when I say that because sometimes people are going to be very guilty to say, what is it that I did wrong? You know, did I sin to cause this trauma? Jesus was asked that question. Why was this man born blind? Was it his sin or the sins of his parents? And Jesus said it wasn't anybody's sin. He was born this way so that in this moment, God could receive glory. That's a paradigm for faithfulness and, and usefulness in a sense of our suffering. What is the end goal? What is... The, the end product of the suffering that we endure. And when we put it in that context, it certainly doesn't make it any less painful, and we don't just whisk it away or, or talk suffering or pain away. But we understand that our suffering can ultimately result in some positive things. Like James says in James 1, that the end goal of our suffering can be perseverance, so that our faith is, is strengthened. Jesus is clearly saying that this man has gone through his whole life blind, being born blind from birth, so that Jesus, in effect, could heal him and bring God much glory. The other thing we need to look at, we need to look at what suffering is. We also need to look at, our, at faithfulness, what faithfulness is. And faithfulness and belief are not exactly the same thing. Demons believe but don't have faith. The difference is that faith is about loyalty. Faith, as Matthew Bates has, has very recently pointed out, is about allegiance. That when we are truly people of faith, that we are people who give our trust, our allegiance, our loyalty to King Jesus. So there are some things that, that can make giving God your loyalty difficult. And we say, what does it look like to be faithful in suffering? We're really asking, how do we maintain our loyalty? How do we maintain our allegiance to God when things are not going our way? Because when you've prayed over something, and we pray to this God who is all-knowing and all-powerful, and our suffering has not been taken away. It can be very easy for our allegiance then to be challenged because we say, well, I've given my allegiance to God because he's a faithful God. I've given my allegiance to God because he's a powerful God. I've given my allegiance to God because he's a delivering God. He's a saving God. And so now all of a sudden we're faced with this thing where God has not answered your prayer because you've been praying relentlessly for this suffering to be relieved and it hasn't happened. So how do you Part of how do we maintain faithfulness in suffering is this question, how do I continue to give my allegiance to a God who is not taking away my pain? Another thing that can be difficult in suffering is that, and this is um, something I again want to be very careful in how I say, but when we suffer, I think it can be very easy for us to rationalize sin. 
So we say, well, I, I go through some very difficult things, therefore I have an entitlement to indulge myself in these other things that are, I know are not godly things. So we need to really check our hearts when we go through suffering. And, and really the simple way to put this is our coping mechanism. What is your coping mechanism when you go through difficulty? Because when life stinks, you're going to seek serotonin, you're going to seek some fuzzies, warm fuzzies in the brain that are you know, going to stimulate your mind that may come through addictive elements, that may come through you know, uh, substance abuse, that may come through certain types of you know, sexual addiction and things like that. So we need to make sure that we're not um, getting into this idea of an, an entitlement that is a, a suffering entitlement, that we end up in a very bad way spiritually. Now, the next thing is this. If you want to know how to be faithful and continue to give God your trust and allegiance in the midst of suffering, we look no further than Jesus Christ himself, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of servant, and being found in the appearance of a man, he made himself obedient, even to the point of death on a cross, Paul says in Philippians 2. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, that the name of Jesus every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus was obedient in suffering. He was not only obedient in suffering, Jesus was faithful in suffering. And what does that mean? Jesus continued to give God his allegiance. Jesus continued to give God his loyalty, his fidelity, even though he suffered. Even though, like us, Jesus prayed, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. That Jesus understood that his faithfulness to God, that his loyalty to God, that his allegiance to God was not contingent upon God answering prayers the way that Jesus saw best. And I think that we need to follow in Jesus' example on that. If, you, if you're going through a really difficult time, I would really encourage you to read 1 Peter. 1 Peter had to be written to suffering Christians because Peter talks about suffering a lot. And it, maybe it's because Jesus predicted Peter's upside-down crucifixion there at the end of the Gospel of John. And who knows, maybe Peter lived some of his life in anticipation of the suffering he was going to endure. We don't know. But it says this in 1 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 13. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give anyone an answer who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if, God's, if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. Jesus suffered, and he suffered not for doing bad, but he suffered for, for doing good. He, he suffered as an obedient servant to God. So you and I are going to suffer. The pain is going to come. You may well be, if you're watching this, I anticipate that you're going through painful things. Death of a loved one, chronic illness, cancer diagnosis, chronic debilitating depressing pain on a daily basis. When you wake up each day and you just don't know how much pain you're going to have to endure that day, but you know it's going to hurt and you know it's going to be that way the next day and the next day and the next day. Maybe it's spiritual anguish. Maybe it's regret over wrongs that are done that you feel so unforgiven for. Maybe it's, maybe it's financial suffering. Maybe it's persecution, hardship. Whatever it is you're going through. The, the most important part of this is that you keep your integrity. That you keep your relationship with God tight and close. And that you don't go at this alone. But you find a group of people you can be vulnerable with and safe with so that you can share these burdens, as Paul told us to do, with some faithful believers. We, we need to make sure, and again, I say this carefully, that our suffering is not just the consequence, the natural consequence of our behavior. Sometimes people get a, a victim mentality that says, well, you know, the whole world is against me because X, Y, and Z, or, you know, it, it, sometimes people avoid ownership of their problems because they attribute the source of their issues to, to other factors or other people or other sources, and they don't take ownership of the fact that they're suffering because they've done some stupid things. If you're suffering because you've done things that are, are, are wrong, if you're suffering because you've done things that were not wise, then we need to own that portion of our suffering. And it doesn't mean that God is unconcerned. It doesn't mean that you can't pray about it. It just means that 
we need to learn the lessons we need to learn from the suffering that we endure. Now, again, I say that lovingly and I say that carefully because I know many of us struggle with guilt and many of us struggle with codependency and we're very, we're very quick to blame ourselves. And sometimes people blame themselves for things that they should have never blamed themselves for. I don't want you to struggle with guilt and shame as a part of watching this video because you're already suffering enough. But if you're in jail for robbing a bank and you're watching this, you're saying, oh, woe is me, why am I suffering? So you might just look and, and take a good look at how you got into that situation. Now, we're all going to suffer. It's just a matter of what is the result of our suffering. Is the result of our suffering things that are good or is the result of our suffering things that are bad? In James chapter 1, 2 through 4, James gives us the end result of our suffering. He says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. James says that when you go through difficulty and suffering, it's going to produce patience and perseverance in your life. Suffering is truly a refining process. It, it consolidates and solidifies our faith. You know, trees, how they have a taper at the bottom. Trees taper at the bottom because of wind. When wind blows a tree, when it's just a little tree and wind is blowing it and it's doing this, it, it strengthens at the bottom. The bottom of that tree grows. If, if a tree never endures the wind, the tree is very breakable. The tree is very, very brittle. You know, suffering stretches us. Suffering strengthens us. us. If we never re face any resistance in life, we are not going to grow up to our potential in Christ. You know, children have to endure difficult things to make them grow. Part of being a good parent is that your children think that you failed them. And I, and I want to say maybe Jordan Peterson had pointed this out at one point in time, and I, I believe that's who it was, and I think it's a brilliant point is that if we are enmeshed with our children, we're going to do everything for them just to ensure that they have a, an easy go at things. But that's not the way that, that life is supposed to work. That's not the rules of the world. The world does not operate in such a way as to give you an easy time. So we do our children a disservice if we do everything for them and it, we alleviate all their suffering. We don't allow them to go through difficult times, difficult circumstances. You know, our kids come to us, will you do this homework for me? Will you, you know, cut this or glue that or write this or do that or help me with these things. And it doesn't mean we can't help. It just means that we cannot prevent them from failing. It means that we cannot prevent them from doing the things that they don't want to do because they're going to get out of our nest and the world is not going to be interested in bending over backwards to keep our children comfortable. And it's very important that they experience that for the first time in a safe environment where the loved ones around them fail them. And now all of a sudden they're forced to deal with things or not deal with things. And and suffer the consequences of whatever decision that they make or the blessings of whatever decision that they make. So if we never face resistance, we never grow. And suffering is something that allows us to continue to grow and stretch in our faith. God is also not going to allow us to suffer to our breaking point. It says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Now, now that verse has something to do with temptation and not necessarily just physical suffering, but I think the principle remains the same, and we are most able to do this together. There is an old saying, an old proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, you go together. And this is true within suffering circumstances. When we go through difficult things, don't go through it together, but prayerfully engage God, asking you for a buddy, asking you asking God for someone to walk through that difficult season with you, someone who is safe, someone you can be confidential with, that you can have confidence with, that you can share these things together, because the road of suffering can be a very long journey. The road of suffering is not often a fast journey. Yes, you stub your toe and that's quickly over, but a lot of trauma is, is very long-lasting. If you want to go far, go together. If you want to go fast, go alone, but the road of suffering is not a fast, short road, typically speaking. Here's what Paul wrote in closing in 2 Timothy 4, 6-8. through 8. He says, I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. We know what the end game is on all of this, and we know where God is inexorably taking all things to make all things new, to wipe away all tears. There is no more death, no more mourning, because the old order of things has passed away. And that that's not a trite just way of saying get over it. No, we don't just get over it. We're going to wrestle. We're going to suffer. We're going to struggle. We're going to strive 
through this life and in this world through some difficult mess. But we don't have to do it alone. Doing it alone intensifies the pain, but you got to do it with other people. And when you go through that, again, what, what is the end product of this? Because then you have a testimony to share about how God walked you through these things with other people so that when you meet people in similar circumstances, you can talk with them about your experience. You know, there are certain things that I'm never going to be able to have a conversation about in any way that, it, that has a deep understanding because there are things that I have just never experienced. But when you go through trauma, then you have wisdom, and if, if nothing more, at least a sensitive listening ear to those who are going through similar things. So how do you maintain faithfulness in suffering? Well, first and foremost, understand that Jesus went first. He was obedient to the point of death, and yet he maintained his loyalty, his fidelity, his faithfulness, his allegiance to God to the very end. And Jesus says, I do not leave you alone, but when I depart, I will send for you the counselor, the advocate, the Holy Spirit will come, and he will guide you in all truth. He will show you what's right and what is wrong. He will remind you of all these things that I've told you, that we have the Holy Spirit as Christians to help us through these times of need. And we truly do have each other. You, we have, And the reason that's important is we can encourage each other. We can hold each other up when one person is struggling, one person is suffering. Someone else can pick them back up and help them back down the road. And sometimes you just need someone to come along and say, you are doing all you can do. It's time to get some rest. Don't continue to beat yourself up, but let's just get some rest. Let's sit here for a while. And maybe that's the kind of word that you need to hear today. Because we are people filled and riddled with shame. We are people filled and riddled with guilt. And that kind of trauma and that kind of baggage can go with us for decades, but it doesn't have to. So I don't have a magic formula for this, but all I know is to, to, to look to Jesus who went before us and who was faithful in suffering and, and to understand the end goal of these things and what it develops within us. And then thirdly, to look and what those things are is it develops perseverance and patience so that we can also then help others in their time of need, like Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, the God of all comfort who comforts us in our time of need so that we can comfort those around us with the same comfort that we have received from God. And last, we are reminded of the great hope that we have in eternity where God has made all things new. And none of this, none of this makes the pain hurt less. If anyone tells you this makes the pain hurt less, don't trust that person because it doesn't. None of this whitewashes this stuff away. But at least it helps us cope in a way that is healthy. At least it helps us cope where we don't indulge coping mechanisms that just dig us further into the pit, further into the hole, and we, have, we need, and this is such a tough word to say when someone's suffering, because it seems like you're piling on. But we need accountability, because sometimes when we suffer, we see that suffering as a license to indulge ourselves in other things. You say, well, other people are not going through this, so therefore God will understand if I do X, Y, and Z, and you go do things that you shouldn't be doing. Maintain your integrity. Keep your chin up. Understand you are blessed. And understand that just because you're going through difficulty doesn't mean that God loves you any less. And I, I, I have no good answer as to why God doesn't relieve some people of the suffering that they endure. I wish I had an amazing magical answer to that question, to that problem. I really don't. But we're going to have to trust him because we know he's good. We know he's good. And he is going to do the right thing. So you are loved. You are blessed. I'm appreciative that you're here Please share this with a friend. Tell them about the channel and let them know how God is working through this so that this can bless more and more people. Love you, and we'll talk to you soon.